G'day mate and welcome to the always raining plateau in desynced with me, Jitty. Today we're going to be covering power. We're going to be covering power for a number of reasons. One, it's going to be one of your limiting factors in expanding out and taking over the world. Two, it's actually quite resource intensive. And as every single bot is going to need power along with every single manufacturer you're running, power is going to be um, definitely one of your limiting factors. So today I want to cover power. I want to cover two parts of power. I want to cover how to make power and also how to transmit power up until about the mid game. In the later game, it becomes a lot easier, but that's gonna be a whole separate video. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, before I fill your head full of information, I just asked a favor, just a little favor. I just like to borrow a like. I like to borrow a like early in the video, not happy with the video, didn't enjoy the video, didn't think it was worth your like. That's all right, you can have it back. All right, power. Power, we've got a couple of different things. First thing I wanna do is I wanna cover how we generate power. Now, very, very early in the tutorial, uh, the lovely lady, the lovely, Elvin? Elvin? I can't remember her name. Yep. She's obviously that not important. Not that important. Uh, covers crystal power. Crystal power is a small building, small module, which once you place inside a module, will start consuming crystals to produce power. It's going to give you 150 power. As you originally start with 500, it is actually a significant boost. I generally recommend building one or two of these just to get you up and running. The good news is after you get solar and batteries and a few other things up and running, they'll no longer consume crystals, which means you could decommission them. Could decommission them. Could always just leave them there because they don't burn that many crystals. Just don't go too nuts with them. Okay, uh, next one we want to talk about is uh, the solar panel. Solar panel is control, please. If you hold down control and left click, it disappears into the module. Thank you. Next one's gonna be solar panel. Solar panel you're gonna get fairly early in the game and it's gonna be your main source of power. Main source of power for a long time. The catch is it only provides power during the daytime, which is fine as the day-night cycle on the planet we happen to crash on happens to be about 90% day and 10% night, which is something I can't complain about too much. Obviously it's a binary system and this should get you up and running for a majority, a majority of your, um, um, well, cycle, cycle, days, nights, everything. You're gonna have to store some power, don't forget, make sure you do store some power, but um, we'll cover power storage in just a second. Next one I'm gonna cover is our first medium module. First medium module being uh, the wind turbine. Now the wind turbine is a little bit different. It's gonna give you 50 power, same as a solar panel, or day and night, very, very good. It's also much more expensive compared to the solar panel. The only advantage the wind turbine, is, well, the big advantage the wind turbine has is if you build it up on the plateau, i.e. up on the mean area where the bugs live uh, rather than down on the flats, it'll give you twice the amount of power, which is going to be 100. 100 power is an awful lot more worth, well, it's definitely worth it if you can clear out enough area of a plateau where you can get a couple of these built. So I highly recommend if you're going to build these, make sure you put them on the plateau. Next one I'm going to talk about is one that you get even later in the game. And I should talk about where we are in the game. I am halfway through the advanced section of the tech tree, okay? Still got a little bit to go. Uh, in, in fact, the one I'm about to talk to, I haven't even unlocked yet. It's even further in the tech tree. But it is the medium solar panel. The medium solar panel is a little bit more different, a little bit unique, in it creates 300 power during the day, but also 100 power during the night. So obviously it's in very, very, very efficient. It captures enough moonlight to give you 100 power during the night. So it's not a bad little thing to grab, grab hold of. Now, the next one I'm gonna talk about is the first large component. This one we actually unlock well before, uh, yes, several texts before the medium solar panel. And this guy gives you 400 power if placed on a plateau day and night. So definitely make sure you place these guys on a plateau especially considering how expensive they are. You know, it's only 270 iron and 171 um, sand. Yeah, yeah. Crystals and everything else are on top of that. Yeah, it's fairly expensive. So definitely make sure you're gonna, if you're gonna build these, make sure you put them up on the plateau. Next one I wanna talk about is how we're gonna store power. How we're gonna store, how we're gonna retrieve power. And this is where the game is a little bit um unique. Let's go with unique, unique and interesting. So we have a couple of different items. Uh, first one we're gonna talk about is the internal capacitor. Actually, that was already loaded. Never mind. Um, now, it has a drain rate of 25, okay, and a charge rate of 500. So, we, being a capacitor, as in real life, you can charge them very, very quickly. Actually, I think in real life, you can drain them just as quickly, but that's besides the point. Maybe it's a super capacitor. Maybe it's a super capacitor. Maybe it's a super future age cap capacitor. Either way, we can charge them very quickly. We can also drain them reasonably okay. The very, very important thing about uh, the drain rate is when the game comes to calculating your power and 
No. Uh, when your game comes to calculating your power usage, as you can see, I'm draining a whole bunch of capacitors and a whole bunch of small batteries. I have an awful lot of small batteries laying around the, the network, but if I'm draining less than 250 uh, power off my network, it has to come from a capacitor because a battery has a discharge rate of 250. So no matter, oops, wrong, all the wrong buttons. No matter what, you're gonna need a certain amount of capacitors around your network. The good thing being an internal module, you can put them in just about everything, put them in your transport bots, put them in your buildings, put them in your storage for all that matters. You're gonna need a good amount of them just to cover your, your low points when you don't have enough battery power in a battery, which is the next item we're gonna talk about, to cover that 250 drain rate. So if you need less than 250, it's going to have to come from a capacitor rather than a battery. I don't know why. It's just how the game works. Um, I don't get it, uh, but it is what it is. So a battery, just like a capacitor, can only drain at its drain rate. In the case of a battery, it stores an awful lot of power, like a lot of power, and it has a drain rate of 250. So uh, that is, again, something you're going to get around about the same time you get a solar panel. They go well together. All right, next power storage we're going to talk about is the medium capacitor. Now, the medium capacitor is just a bigger and better boy. Uh, the advantage of this guy is uh, none, honestly. Not honestly, you know, compared to a small battery that has a power storage of 15,000, medium capacitor has a storage a power storage of 20,000. It does charge very fast. It does drain at twice the speed. Um, but I can't think of a single reason to build these guys, especially when you hold down Alt and look at the costs. You're like, okay, it's 28, uh, 28... Crystal Chunks, 36 metal, and one of these guys is um, 6 and 15. Yep, yeah, I cannot see a point to using medium capacitors, but they exist. They exist. That's the important thing. Okay, so they exist. All right, next thing we're going to talk about is uh, power transmission. So power transmission, we have a couple of options. I've got all of them sitting right here. Uh, we have the small internal portable power field. This is only going to give you a range of three, which is not very far, and if of course, if we press P, we can see exactly where our power range goes to currently. In my case, well, it goes everywhere because we're, we're in a test map. We're in a test map. Okay. Uh, actually, don't worry about my, my stream map. My stream map. I'm streaming uh, decent on the weekends over at Twitch. Link is on your screen right now. Also be down in the description. Come swing by on the weekends. Say hello. Uh, obviously, I've put the, screen, uh, the times I stream on the screen. We've been playing a lot of decent. Also been playing at multiplayer. So hopefully the programming is reasonably good between three, four, five of us. We'll see. Anyway, uh, as it portable power field, three range, three range, not very far. The next one, uh, which is the one you get very, very early in the game, is the small power field. Small power field has a range of eight. Range of eight is a decent amount. It's enough to sort of get things moving, and obviously you can chain link them, which is why you see I have power poles just about everywhere, because well, they're all linking together to give me one giant power network. Don't forget, uh, being a small module, you can also put it on a bot. So if you wish to extend your power network out, uh, as for this little dash bot here that's out of power, if I move down, how about three tiles, four tiles? Hey, he is technically outside the power net network, uh, but he can get power because he's touching the power network. It's weird, it's weird. So uh, we can choose to power up a bot that way. And of course, now he's outside the power network. He's going to uh, slowly discharge. Oh, I should mention every single bot, every single bot does have an internal capacitor. I don't think you can use that to run buildings on the network, but technically they have their own internal capacitor. All right, uh, next thing we're going to talk about is much later in the tech tree. Much later in the tech tree is up in uh, this area, the power field technology, which comes up with other things we're not talking about in this video, which is the medium power field. Now, if we do a quick comparison, uh, you are, what, five crystal, 10 metal. Uh, the medium one itself is um, much, much, much more expensive, but it does have the advantage of being a range of 15. So, um, it has twice the range of one of these little guys. The catch is it's going to have to go in a medium module, which also means you need a medium platform. But as you can say, it means half as many power poles. Probably going to be more handy actually to put on a vehicle uh, than anything else. That way you can extend your power network with a couple of vehicles to chain your power out to other places. All right, so that's uh, one of the ways we can transfer power. This is how we can store power. This is how we can make power, at least up to the mid game. There's one other one I want to cover, which is the medium power transmitter. So the medium power transmitter is a very, very, very unique building. It lets you transfer 100 power to a single vehicle. So if we take our little dashbot, who is definitely well outside the power network, uh, he has, if I hover over there, yep, just, just 
15. We're just using 15 energy. He's got no sort of power generation. But if I take this and I aim it at him, we can see he is receiving 100 power from the power grid. Now, if I put a second one of these in a second building, aim it at him, he's now receiving 200 power. And then if I put a third one in and aim it at him, he's now receiving 300 power, which is very, very handy. Uh, if we hover over this, Target transmitting, yes, okay. So this is not costing us uh, any extra power. It's not like it has a, a loss, a loss for range or a loss for, I don't know, just, just the magic of sending power wirelessly. It is 100% efficient, which is very, very handy. Not so much for powering a dashboard that's like three tiles outside the power network, but for remote mining operations. Remote mining operations, uh, if I grab these guys and I have a remote mining operation out here, which is on its own network. It's just generating enough power with a whole lot of uh, dashboards covered with uh, solar caps. And if I go back to these buildings and I say, hey, you, hey, you, target you. And now you should have uh, generated 400 and something and received another 100. But it means that if I can grab you and also assign you to that one and then grab the third one and assign you here as well it means this little power network which was well actually can i turn on this and that's the button i want there we go uh we can see that i it won't tell me actually i can see what's consuming i can see what's producing Okay, uh, if I just grab all my dash bots then uh, that were transmitting our power and get them out of the way and off this power network, can we turn power back on, please? Thank you. All right, and bring this back up. We can see that hopefully, uh, yes, I'm receiving 300 power and well, my load has also gone down by an awful lot. Main reason that happens is... Um, each one of these little guys that are on their own power network. Can I bring that up, please? Mm, no, please, please. Trying to get this to line up is very different, difficult. We're definitely not on the same power grid. Can we bring up that? You, you, you're not powering a miner. Whatever, whatever. Uh, we can see each one of these guys is producing 50 power with their little solar cap, uh, but the ca catch is each one of these bots just sitting there doing nothing is also using 15 power. Uh, that's when things get a little bit awkward. Uh, so each solar cap on my little dash bots is only actually providing 35 power. Whereas, well, by using the power transmitters, I'm now beaming in 300 power to this network. And that means, well, my little mining bots can keep running forever. They can keep jumping all their materials into the mining control. We will be covering uh, automated mining in a future video. You should hit subscribe if you're curious on how that particular video works and how to set up the automation for it. it requires a little bit of programming. Not too, nothing, nothing too complicated, but enough to get you up and running. But yes, uh, with using this method, I can have my own tiny independent power network, which means offsite mining becomes so much easier. Anyway, uh, that's really what I wanted to cover with this video. Uh, our very, very early power generation up to about mid game, your power storage. And like I said, throw capacitors and a couple of things I have no issue having my dash bots having solar caps whilst they're transporting things around because that small module is doing nothing important. Uh, also, very much consider stretching out a power network of uh, idle dash bots that are just sitting there out in the middle of uh, no man's land to extend out your power network just temporarily, just to so you can mine out an area or two. Uh, also, well, the big one, the big one, how to transfer power over last, large distances. Uh, that's going to be a game changer when you get that technology. If you're curious, it's all the way up. Oh, sorry, it's a power upgrade. So it's uh, the first node in advanced, which is not going to be quick to get to. Honestly, not going to be quick to get to. Anyway, I need to leave this video here. As I said, if you're interested in more programming, more desync tutorials, we'll be covering some in the future. Um, I think our first one will probably be mining. Mining is uh, fairly important and you tend to burn through a lot of resources. I have that all logistics. Please, down in the comment section, tell me which you prefer to see first. You know, trying to set up a little bit more efficient logistics so you have to have uh, less bots running around moving things or would you like to see a little bit more of a scaled up mining operation it's totally up to you guys and if you're unsure want to stay a lurker do me a favor just 
copy an emoji copy an emoji drop it down in the comment section below it'll definitely help out the video always helps out the video and i've provided a helpful little emoji right here in the title of the video that you can just copy and paste anyway with all that said i'm gonna leave this video here as always uh thank you guys so much for watching do hope you've enjoyed and i'll see you in the very next video all right bye